And we're super excited this evening to uh, invite Maureen, who was a Career Foundry student um, before, but is now working in the field as a UX designer. And we've also invited Pia, um, who is a UX designer and was uh, Maureen's mentor here at Career Foundry. So we have a dual mentorship model where students get paired with a mentor and a tutor as they do one of our programs. So that's kind of the support network that you get um, if you do one of our programs. Um, I don't really want to introduce um, Maureen or Pia because they can do that uh, themselves much better. What I would say is that uh, Maureen has a fantastic Instagram account, which I've also um, plugged shamelessly before on Instagram, which is UX Collection, which has some really fantastic um, UX design stuff. So uh, material, which I would definitely recommend checking out. And Pia also has a fantastic blog called UXD Girl. Uh, which I was reading before, which is some great articles um, on UX design. And it's more of a kind of a collaboration between um, different people working in the field. Um, but without further ado, um, because otherwise I'll just start rambling on and on, um, I'll let Maureen and uh, Pia introduce themselves. Maybe we start, because I spoke to Maureen uh, eight weeks ago, let's start first with Pia. So Pia, maybe just tell um, everybody who's listening, um, yeah, who you are and what you do and how you found Career Foundry and all kinds of everything in between yeah thank you very much for the introduction so hi everyone uh, i'm looking at some names in the chat and i'm uh, i'm feeling really worn because there are quite a few of my of my students actually there as well so uh lovely to see you all here uh so yes uh, like you said i'm a, i'm actually a senior ux designer um based in munich i work for a company called user lane for a whole month now so i'm also uh, not really at this point a career changer but i am a career um, I developed my career uh, in the last uh, half a year, I would say, uh, going forward. Uh, but at the same time, I am a career changer like probably most of you guys or most of you. Um, I have background in teaching. I actually have a master's in primary school education. So it was a, it was quite a leap going from there to then design and, and ending up in UX. Um, I met Career Foundry, I guess, about five years ago. Um, I think it was an ad in Smashing Magazine, so it was kind of, I always saw it as faith. Uh, it just, it called me and I applied. And uh, I guess it was love at first sight because I stayed for, well, now for five years. So hopefully going on strong. But uh, yeah, like you said, um, met Maureen in the, in the course and she was one of the one of the really successful students and it was a pleasure to work with. So today, very excited to actually have this chat with you guys. And to Maureen. Hi, um, yeah, it was also really nice to see that there are so many people from so many places today joining. Um, yeah, my name is Maureen, for those who didn't know me from Instagram yet. Um, I followed the UX program at Korea Foundry three years ago now, and man, um, Pia was then my mentor. She really helped me a lot with finding a job, with the course itself and the program itself. And now I'm living in Berlin. I'm originally from the Netherlands, and I work as a UX designer here. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Maureen. Um, for the people who are listening, we will be doing a Q and A um, at the end. So, if you do have any questions um, whilst we're talking, um, feel free to add them in the chat, and then um, I'll go through them at the end, and we can also ask them. But to kick it off, um, maybe um, if you could, or one of you, or I don't know who wants to go first, but um, maybe just tell us what you kind of what really inspired you, or how did you find UX design, and how did you realize that that was would be the kind of the career choice for you. Um, start with, uh, I'll start with Maureen this time. Um, I, well, I was always interested in design. Uh, I was always drawing as a kid already. And originally I really wanted to become an illustrator or a graphic designer. So I was already playing around with Photoshop and um, my parents got me my first iMac and supported me to pursue a career in illustration and in design. And um, after my studies, I worked in marketing for a bit and noticed that that was not entirely the direction I wanted to go in. And my dad actually was the one that told me about UX design and said that this could be something that I could be interested in. So I read more about that, but back then there was not so much 
information available yet. So I wasn't so sure if this is something for me. And that is also through my research about UX design is how I uh, got to know Career Foundry. And the same yeah. question to Pia. Yeah, when I'm thinking about inspiration, it's actually from a completely different angle because for me, uh, it was basically problem solving that brought me to uh, to being a designer. And for me, it's still when I'm thinking of design, it's something that you create visually and it's something beautiful. It's more art than anything. And for me, UX was always not really that, but it was problem solving in its essence. And uh, when I was transitioning from school environment to actually working for my own company where we worked um, as a team of a developer and sort of a girl for everything at that point, uh, I I started doing UX in, in a way that I didn't even know what this is. So when I was asking questions like, what is it that I'm doing? What is this combination of you know marketing and 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 web design and just business and all together um it uh, a couple of years down the line it became clear that that is what was called human computer interaction back in those days uh now obviously it's it's ux and um yeah this this problem solving aspect when when you can really like look at anything and define it and the more you define it the easier it is to solve that was um that was my love uh, for it mm -hmm. Um, and for some of the people who may have just joined us, um, we're doing this interview today because um, Maureen was a student at Career Foundry, is now working as a UX designer, and Pia was uh, Maureen's mentor at Career Foundry. So we have a dual mentorship model where um, our courses, each student is paired with a tutor and a mentor. Um, maybe a question for Maureen is, um, what value does this kind of mentorship um, offer whilst you're doing the program and also maybe after the course? Um. I think it was the most valuable thing from the program to have someone that is invested in your journey and that can answer questions that you have and that you build a personal relationship with because there is a lot of information available on the internet, but to have someone that motivates you and that really is there for you to answer the questions that you have about tasks about how to solve a certain problem but also how to build your portfolio how to um, prepare for a job interview how to negotiate salary like these are the kind of questions that you don't find answers to or at least i couldn't find them back then and that is where i see the value of a mentor and yeah that was the most important thing for me mm -hmm. And Pia, do you agree? Do you think the mentorship adds value whilst you're doing a program or a boot camp? Yeah, I do. Absolutely. Um, I myself actually took the, the online program when I started, but it was there was no mentorship at that time. Right. This this was quite many years ago. And this is one of the values that I see really in, in mentoring. It's it's it it goes both ways, obviously. But at the same time, it gives the, the student um, an opportunity to talk with someone that is in the field because no matter how good of a program you have, it's going to be different. Mm -hmm. And if we can bring our stories, if we can, if we can bring our, our experiences to the table and being honest and just telling the truth, then this is what you can give them. Mm -hmm. Now, I think probably lots of the people who are tuning in this evening are probably deciding um, whether to do an online course or whether to do a boot camp. Um, but maybe we could explain um, how you go about choosing the right boot camp for you. Um, and maybe the best person to start with with Maureen because you chose the course and you chose to do it with Career Foundry. So maybe talk mm -hmm. through just how that came about, really. Um, yeah, the, I think um, the, the most important thing for me was to have something that um, gave me some hands-on information and practice because I've been studying for five years before and I really did not feel motivated to go to university again. I was so happy that that was behind me. Um, but at the same time, I also felt like a boot camp or a seminar that goes on for a few days or for a few weeks was not enough for me because I was completely new to UX design and um, I felt like I, I needed more guidance and I needed a curriculum that would just tell me, okay, this are, these are the things that you're gonna learn. 
this is how long it will take and I wouldn't have to go through the whole hustle of finding all these things myself. So that was the reason why I went on looking for online courses or like online schools. And I think Career Foundry was actually one of the first hits that I had on Google. So I looked deeper into that and that seemed to uh, take all the boxes that I had that I was looking for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what would you say to Pia to somebody who's thinking about doing a course or a program um, in UX design? Um, worthwhile or not? <laughs> well, obviously, no, I'm um, looking at the last five years that I work with Career Fungi, I see a lot of success stories. And it's still one of the, or it's probably the only course that I actually recommend. And it is because it's mentored and it is because it's so structured and it is because it takes time. Um, so I'm not a huge fan of those, you know, weekend courses or there was something that will last you two months. It just doesn't cut it. Like even now when you're investing months and months and months, you're still at the beginning, you're, you're building your foundations. And then I always say, you know, now you now you're a designer but still this is where you start building up and this is where you start acquiring knowledge this is where you you see how much you don't know still right but it it gives you enough confidence to get a job and to really start um i don't have the same confidence in something that is short term and then it's uh it's a self-learning platform and it's also probably because i know how people learn um and i also know how i learn myself when i'm looking for a course online and it's just it's not the same mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and maybe it's also interesting for the people who are listening um when you had your first kind of um like video call the first check-in what were the things that you actually um talked about um during these calls that's in, in general <laughs> yeah in general do you want to go Marie? Do you want to answer that, Pia, what the questions are that you generally get uh, well, now, um, now I'm kind of prepared. So I give them a little bit of a, every mm -hmm. student gets a little monologue about how everything is going to run, just sort of organizational things, because I feel like even if, you know, you're bombarded with information, you still want to hear those things from, from a person. And it is different when you get in and you say, look, these are some of the points where it would be good that we call and then we talk because I can can help you here and there so you give them a reassurance you make a little introduction you ask them to introduce themselves and then i i might be lucky but a lot of my students or most of them actually bring a lot of questions already to the first session um and i'm excited for to hear the questions and actually just answer and those may be very generic sort of general ux questions or industry questions they might be about my career my progression uh whatnot and then we go from there Mm -hmm. I suppose one of the one of the main kind of or the biggest leap is really from doing this kind of online curriculum to then actually um, getting your portfolio ready and then going into job interviews. That's a big leap. So maybe Maureen, was it was it good before you started to go into these kind of this like, kind of like the job interview stage? Was it useful to have a mentor there just to be able to okay, I'm going to have this interview. There's someone who's already been through this, and mm -hmm. I can kind of like back up what I've already learned i would actually say that with that stage that was the most important um stage to have a mentor because that is someone that already did all those steps and um in the course or in the program you collect material to build a portfolio and building a portfolio on its own is not so difficult you have so many tools and you have so many people giving advice but having someone that helps you tailor that portfolio to a job application and that helps you with what kind of company do you have to apply to and what do you write in your cover letter? Th these are the questions that I also talked about with Pia and Pia also um, advised me then to focus on just a few companies instead of sending my portfolio to 80 uh, companies just really focus on the few that were interesting to me and make sure that i um that my portfolio really spoke to them and and used the same language and um showed how 
I can solve problems that they're facing. So this is something that she definitely helped me with a lot. And also when I then at my job interview, I, I just asked Pia like, how do I, what kind of salary do I have to ask? And how do you ask that? Because there is not so much information available on like what can you actually earn as a UX designer who has no experience before and, and how do you confidently say a certain number and where is that based upon? So these are the questions that, yeah, I discussed with PN that she could give me answers to. Mm -hmm. I think it's worthwhile also to say that when you go into job interviews, you're never really starting from scratch anyway, because lots of people have um, transferable skills that they've learned throughout their life. So lots of people have soft yeah. skills that they have even before they've presented their portfolio. Um, with the Career Foundry course, with the UX Design Program and our other career change programs, the portfolio is the key takeaway. So the great thing about portfolio is that you've created it, it's a series of projects, and when you go into that interview, you can then um, walk the person who's interviewing you through your portfolio and exactly how you did it. So you're kind of an expert on what you're doing, and they're not necessarily an expert on what you've done. So it's a kind of a show and tell, and that's a, it's also a great um, entry point for also them to ask questions for you and also you to ask questions for them. Um, and you'll hear this also from our career services mm -hmm. team. Um, but Pia, what kind of, um, maybe just describe, or what is the value of the portfolio? Maybe you could elaborate a little bit on or what you've seen from previous students and stuff. Yeah, obviously this is, this is something that showcases um, your, just where you are skill-wise, um, right? This is where you can tell your story. And this is, like Maureen said, I really strongly believe that it's not about it's not about sending your application to 500 different companies, but it is to find some that will really talk to you and you will talk to them in the way that it will, it will be a connection on your values and it will be a connection on what they are searching for, but also what you're searching for, right? Like you said, these are career changers. Um, most of the students that I work with are, are experts in different fields already, right? So showcasing that as well, it's, it's incredibly important. Um, it just, it adds value to your application. And the more, the better you tell the story, especially the story that will talk to them in a way where they see your portfolio and they say, oh, this person is perfect for us, the better, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think I'll just jump into, we've got quite a lot of questions coming through from um, people who are watching. Um, and maybe I'll just jump into a couple that have come up. Um, one question is, I live in Wien, this is for Maureen. Do I need to speak German for working as a UX designer? And Maureen, do you speak German as well? Um, I speak German, I speak fluently German, and I found that that is still very important. Um, of course, I think it depends on location and I think it depends on industry where you want to work in a startup. It's probably not that important, but at my job right now, everyone speaks German. That is also very important um, skill to have because the clients we work for are German clients. So I would say that, yeah, for me personally, it's important, but I think there are also jobs where you can, yeah, find a position that's only English speaking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that one. <laughs> I'm at a I'm at a B two level German, so that tells you that should tell you um, something. So my German is obviously not good. Um, I. I see a difference a little bit working for an agency maybe and working in-house. In-house, that is way less of a problem. Also, it really depends, like you said, Maureen, depends on the location. Um, I'm based in Munich. Munich is really international. A lot of these startups that we have or even bigger companies, they, they have English as the, their first language. Uh, if you like international environments, then this is a place to go. If you like more traditional, then German would be good. Um, another question that's come through, and I think this one is probably uh, an increasingly important question, is somebody asked, um, I was wondering how important is data in the UX and UI field? Does having a data background help? Pia? More and more, at least in my line of work. Uh, it really depends what kind of a UX designer you are. I, I, see, I see maybe 
UX design changing a tiny bit, uh, or maybe we have more and more overlaps with different other professions. So if you have a lot of overlap with product management, then knowing data or at least understanding it is very, very useful. Uh, if you have more overlap with the visual design, then probably not because then you will be working with analytics or with BI department. But uh, in the other way, it's yeah, it's it's quite quite useful to actually have that knowledge. Maureen, do you agree? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I also think data really helps you to, um, to to explain your designs to stakeholders or to other people because um, if you can show that you, data actually um, proves why a certain design or solution is the right way to go, then it's easier for you to bring up arguments. Um, of course, people can say like, I don't like yellow, but that is just an opinion. If you can prove with data, like say, we know from testing that 75% of the people won't click on this button if it's yellow, then that is a better argument. And so I would say that data is definitely important. And I think a really important building stone for designers to um, prove their credibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another question that's come through is how long does it take to be a fully fledged UX designer? And <laughs> um, how much do I, time do I need to invest in this course? Um, I can answer that one. Um, our UX design program um, is can be completed in under 10 months. And we calculate that at 15 hours a week. But if you do have more time, you can do it much faster. Uh, and I think Maureen is proof that you can do it faster. I think you did it. You Didn't you even get offered a job before the end of the program? Yeah, that's right. So I got a job before I finished the program, but I took around 10 months to finish completely, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it is um, flexibly paced. So um, depending on what your work schedule is or if you have other things going on um, in your life, family and stuff, you can um, pace the course around what you're doing. Um, so that answers um, that question. Um, another question that's come through is um, when interviewing for jobs, um, how do companies react to the um, to the fact that you've been working at um, or studying at Career Foundry? Were there any concerns from the interviewer, and how did you overcome them? <laughs> I think it's also a boring question. Uh I, I did not get any negative reaction to that because I think that it um, is more about your portfolio and how you fit with your soft and your hard skills into a team. And I think if that is convincing, then it doesn't it's it's it doesn't matter if you have a degree or or what your background is. Um, so I have not had any negative reactions on Career Foundry. Mm -hmm. um, maybe let's talk about the industry um, in more general terms. Um, Pia, maybe, um, do you think that UX design is still an industry where you can see growth? Um, do you still have to, um, is, do you find that the, your career in UX design is stagnant or do you think, find that you have to constantly learn new things as you go along to keep up to date or maybe just explain like the day-to-day -day of a UX designer? Yeah, so um, I think like with any job in, in IT right now, you have to grow one way or another. Um, and you, ex especially in ways, because it's becoming, it's becoming bigger and bigger. Uh, you know, we're getting a little bit of product management, a little bit of visual um, design, a little bit of data science now, a little bit of this and that, and it, it continues to grow. I think the basis is the same, right? If you look at really the basics, like the heuristics or the, whatever the, the the work the Nelson's group did, like this is this is pretty much static. The psychology in it is quite static. So once you have this this background, that's actually really good to build upon. But when, when you get into anything else, then you need to grow, you need to see what are the trends, you need to understand um, yeah, where you're moving. So I would say this is a never ending story of learning uh, one way or another. And I've changed, uh, I, I've changed how she sort of three industries in, in IT. So I came from, from gaming, went into privacy browser search. Now I'm in, in digital adoption. Like just 
this fact uh, pushes you to learn. And for me, actually, the interesting part was that the easiest to learn is through working with my students um, because they will bring questions that you haven't thought about or maybe different perspectives that I haven't thought about. And I will have to think things through and I will have to read and whatnot. So, um, yeah, this is a, a never ending story. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, um, lots of the messages that we get through also working um, with the students or people that have recently joined one of our programs is that they want um, they want a career which is more exciting. So maybe mm. they've um, stagnated their current career and they think, okay, UX design, UI design, I want to be more creative. I want to have more contact with people. Um, and I think that is the case is that um, yeah. when you are working as a UX designer, not that I am a UX designer, but often yeah. might. <laughs> um, no, but definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's so much diversity in our work, and um, that's why I also didn't didn't really answer. I'm sorry, the question about what is the day to day like because there there is no day that it would be the same. This is not like you get to work and you sit down and you do you know tasks. I mean, yeah, you do, but these tasks are always different. We might go from a design sprint one week to writing user stories the next one or just a little part of the day. I might be doing a little bit of research or if I'm working with a researcher, I would actually talk with them. Uh, in my company right now, we do a lot of co-creation. We actually sit together, we do workshops. So it's it's always, it's so dynamic that this is one profession that I can guarantee there is no boredom. Like I, I haven't yet met that stage of the career and I've been in it for about 10 years, so. Mm -hmm. Um, Maureen, uh, one question for you. Um, how is it like from going to studying UX design, so working with the Career Foundry curriculum, and then actually working in the field? So the difference between being a student and actually, okay, I'm now a UX designer. Mm -hmm. um, what I noticed when I started working is the pace is different. Because of course, when you're studying, you have a lot of time. Um, you have the chance to go through the whole design thinking process. So taking your time to interview people, to do proper user research, to analyze these data and form them into flows, make design solutions, test these solutions. And then if you start working, um, I work in an agency and that also means that the projects I work on are temporary and that brings a certain pace with it. Sometimes you don't have time for user research or only very limited time or you don't have time to spend a week sketching wireframes. You will have to immediately make a design that is as polished as it can be. and. This um, was something I struggled with when I started working to pick up with that pace and to realize that this design thinking process that you learn in the program, um, that is a process that is not always followed in reality. Ideally, it would, but that is just not how it always works. Um, and so that is something that took a bit of time for me to, to find a rhythm in that. And the other thing that um, I really liked and uh, to, to find out was that I, I was taught a lot of tools and methods and techniques in the program that my colleagues didn't even know. So mm -hmm. I have a lot of colleagues that come from different design backgrounds and I saw that I could actually bring new user research techniques into the company because they didn't know that yet or a different way of synthesizing data and this is something i really like i still uh that must have that must have felt good hey was that sorry that felt good when you you went into the new company you're like, yeah, okay. like there. <laughs> <laughs> um and i still to this day um regularly go back to my career foundry dashboard and just read through the modules and see like oh what were the techniques that i learned back then and I, I still use it as some kind of a blueprint. Whenever I'm stuck in the process, I just go back and I read of, of like, how did I do that when I was actually studying? Mm -hmm. That's an important point to say as well for anyone listening is that you do have uh, mm -hmm. lifetime access to the materials that you use and you will have your, obviously your portfolio, but also you have unlimited access to the career services team afterwards. Um, if you want to check in, uh, we always love to know what's happened uh, to our alumni 
Um, you might even end up in a story, which we do. If you wanted, to, if you end up in that, well, get in touch with us. Um, another question that's come up is, I suppose you kind of answered it before, um, Maureen, is that how do you actually keep up to date as UX designer? Do you find that it's actually reading materials online or do you find that it's actually through your professional connections and your work colleagues? I think a combination of everything. So the way I stay up to date is through my Instagram channel. I love that I meet so many designers there and I get a lot of inspiration from them. So that is how I get up to date with what others are doing and gain new perspectives. I follow newsletters. I, at some point it also becomes some kind of a mindset. So whenever I see a website or an app that solves the problem in a very charming way. I make screenshots of it and I think, oh, this is really smart. I have to remember that. So that's also how you build a whole library of patterns and solutions that you can tap into when you're designing yourself. And yeah, of course, now it's more difficult with the current situation, but I also really love meeting up with people, going to design jams. You have that here in Berlin, but I believe it's worldwide where they organize these, it's some kind of like a hackathon for designers. And uh, I would go to other meetups for designers. So I think that's really important to hear other people's perspectives, not necessarily to just like talk about <laughs> wireframes or whatever, but really to to see what others are doing and how they are thinking. That is really important as a designer. Mm -hmm. uh, one question that comes up quite often, we actually do have a YouTube channel where we've got some of these videos, um, but one question is how to choose between UX or UI design. <laughs> Pia, I can see you want to answer that one. <laughs> I mean, this is such a personal question. This is something that I would coach someone through is understanding what they want to achieve, right? This is nothing, it's not, you know, when there is no one answer to this. This is uh, this is a conversation waiting to happen. So um, yeah, I I always have a conversation around it with my students and we, we do it more of a coaching session than a mentoring session. Um, it's, it's about what you love and about what, you know, what, where you thrive. Uh, one is where I would see UX being more strategic, being more, not so much on the artistic side, more of the problem solving, but this kind of, I can't say engineering kind of approach to it, but more sort of non, yeah, non, non artistic, let's put it that way for the lack of the better word. And then the UI is really more this, this beautiful part, this visual, this visual thing. For me, it was always like I always ask myself, how much do I want to um, to sort of to to do pixel perfect designs? And it's always like, ah, no, <laughs> not really. And that's kind of the the answer for me. Uh, for me, it was also knowing that I I love the the product management perspective on it. I love working with them. This is also where I grow the most. Uh, and then you okay, the UX is my primary uh, focus, even though I can do um, UI. And if you can do both, it's actually really, really useful. But it's a, it's a coaching question. <laughs> yeah, I would say you don't, why, why choose? You wouldn't, I also don't think you have to choose right from the start because when I started studying UX, I had in the back of my mind this idea of, I will probably develop in the, direction of UI because I always liked graphic design and I Im could imagine myself um, liking UI design better. And then when I started working, I actually realized, no, I love UX design and I don't, th the idea of like making pixel perfect designs to me is not so appealing anymore. So I think it's also not set in stone. You can, you can learn and then on your journey, find out what fits you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Th this is the dynamics that I talked before, right? Um, yes, even in it's the truth of today's world, I think, is even if you're hired as something, uh, as a title, right? I'm, I'm hired as a, well, I've been hired always as a UX designer, but I've done so many different things. And I think it's in the best interest of the company when you join to recognize where you're really strong and you know, where you want to grow. And if they support you in that, then in the end, you might be something completely different, but still titled 
something, right? So explore what you love and just uh, see where you can bring value and um, it will bring you dynamics. Mm -hmm. And for anyone who, um, who's watching who um, doesn't know the difference between UX and UI design, because it is a question that we're often asked, um, if you go to the Career Foundry website and go to the blog, you will find articles there which um, deal directly with that question. Um, one question that's come through is, did you stay connected with your mentor post-career foundry? Maureen? Uh, I think this is the um, proof that, yes, we do. <laughs> I, stalk her. I stalk her on her Instagram. <laughs> they mutually stalk one another. <laughs> um, to Maureen, how many applications did you send until you found your first job in UX design? Um, I was extremely lucky because I only sent one. <laughs> no, 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 no. And then your mentor would say that wasn't luck. And it was saying, also a, a strategic choice, I have to say. Like that's what um, we talked about before, um, where Pia also advised me don't send like 500 random applications, but really think about where do you want to apply. So I did that and I apply to one job and that's also the job i'm still doing so mm -hmm. yeah if i may that you know i am saying this that doesn't guarantee that anyone will or everyone mm -hmm. will get it in the first try right there are people that just take longer um for one over or another reason i always say look it is about problem solving you need to look at what is going wrong when it's when it's not going right right but in Maureen's case, because I work with her, I know that it wasn't pure luck. It was it was good work. So yeah, it was a great application. <laughs> it was. It really was. Um, Pia, a question for you: um, for the students that you're currently teaching, um, who are working um, full time during the UX design program, mm -hmm. um, how are they coping with the weekly workload? Um, should I lie or not? No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Uh, it's true. not the easiest, right? It's not an easy course, but it's well worth putting an effort in. And this is what I'm hearing from every single one of them. Um, and I would say I, I never kept score, but uh, and I would actually be curious to see the score. But if my memory serves me right, majority of my students, like 95 plus percent probably finished the course, even the ones being employed. And majority of them is actually fully employed. Some have even kids. So, um, but it's not easy, right? If, if, if you're thinking of, oh, is it going to be enough that I put in two hours per week? Most likely not, but this is career change and this is something that will define your life. And they they seem to be incredibly happy putting this much effort. Mm -hmm. It is worthwhile mentioning that we do also have a student services team. Um, yeah. and they do work with the students that we have at Career Foundry working on uh, time planning, time management, um, because uh, as you may have also heard during our Instagram stories, is that um, if you manage your time and you box off a certain hours that you do a week and you get into that kind of routine and you also reward yourself, rewarding yourself is a big part of it, um, whatever that be, whatever um, interests you, but um, this is the way that you will achieve um, your goals. So we also work with students um, in, you know, kind of planning time management and stuff. Um, another question that's come through, um, is UX a design a good field for older workers? We have one um, person here who says that they have 20 plus years um, in marketing and they're ready to pivot. They're on, mm -hmm. the, on the edge. What would you say? Marketing is a good background to have. Um, so I, I mostly see, I think there is a lot of, there is a lot of people coming from marketing, coming from graphic design um those two i would almost say that are the strongest some psychology as well um but that doesn't mean um that others cannot be successful i had geologists coming in and i was like you did what and they were like i'm, I'm a geologist and i was like wow <laughs> that's interesting so we have all different fields but um marketing is is a good one because also there's so much overlap that um it's easy to pick up Mm -hmm. And I also think um, to the second part of that question, um, if you are coming and you've also brought this wealth of experience with you, been working in marketing before, because UX design is so um, human centric, you've also got a lot of skills already. So um, don't think that because you've got 20 years, you're already past it. 
Um, that is by no means the case. Um, another question um, which I maybe can answer is, um, how are you paired with your mentor? Well, at Career Foundry, we do pair mentors and tutors within your time zone. So you will have no 4 a.m. calls with somebody on the other side of the world. Um, so that answers um, that question. Um, could you tell us, uh, maybe Maureen, about your teamwork? So how do you work with your team as a UX designer where you're, current, where you're working in Berlin? Um, so how do you work with your team or interact with your team? Um, well, I think I would say teamwork is the most important thing because um, I work now in an agency that consists of only UX and UI designers. So I work very closely with my colleagues. Um, but it also depends on the projects we're doing. So since we're working on different projects with different clients, we always work very closely together with those clients and um, do workshops with them together, find design solutions with them together. Um, we invite them over to do user testing. So when we're gonna do user testings, um, the client is also there to see how we do that. So I would say that teamwork is really important because if you're working on a solution, but you never ask for feedback, then this solution is just going to be mediocre at best. You need design colleagues to look on your work and tell you what's working and, what, and what's not. And the same with interviewing the people you're designing for. It's so important to hear uh, their opinion. So for me, teamwork is way bigger than just working with your direct colleagues, but it's way more about working with everyone that this uh, product or website or whatever you're making involves. So working with the managers, working with the designers, with the developers, with the people that will use the product in the end, so the customers, um, that's all one big team to me. Mm -hmm. um, and the same question to Pia. Yeah, I very much agree. Uh, teamwork for a UX designer is the most important thing. Um, we are people's people, right? We, are, we need to work with people. Um, I always said that when I was introducing myself, I would say, well, I'm a bridge builder. And I am because I need to actually, um, especially in-house, you don't only have designers, right? But you might have developers, you might have QAs, you might have product managers, project managers. If you work in agile environment and you have a whole lot of different sets than, than people bringing in their, um, their expertise. And a lot of the times, either the product management or UX design are gonna be the ones that are bringing everyone together and, um, and, and encouraging collaboration. Um, I couldn't be happier now where I work because I see this collaboration happening and it's this open communication not only is then your process faster than it would be, you're also not designing in silo. And with the teamwork, what you can get is a quick buy-in. It's like if you involve people from the beginning and you're not defensive or you're not protective over your design, um, then, then they're more likely to agree to what you're suggesting because they will feel included and they will feel like they, they fit together um, with the idea and, and they made a contribution. So yeah, incredibly important. Um, another question, and maybe it's worthwhile actually clarifying this for some people who are watching tonight, is that um, you, the, the term UX designer or being a UX designer is actually a very broad um, church. You have Within that, you have UX writers, there's UX analysts. Um, there's lots of different avenues, pathways that you can go down. It's not just one um, singular path. It's the kind of you can spread out in all different directions. The question mm -hmm. that's come through is, is it important to have um, a basic knowledge in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript? Uh, Maureen. Uh, yeah, that's the question I also ask myself. Uh, <laughs> designer code. That's a, the question everyone asks. Um, I did do a course on HTML and CSS and JavaScript also because that interested me. Um, do I use these skills? No, never. Um, because I think it's not important to know exactly how to code. It is important to know how to communicate with developers. And knowing code is one way of communicating with them. But I find in my work, it's way more important to 
know what is a realistic design, what is something that is technically uh, viable to make. And that is also something that you find out by talking with your product manager, talking with developers. And from early stages on, um, showing them what your ideas are and then figuring out in what way they can implement that or they can develop that. Um, I would say that if you have knowledge of HTML and CSS, it never hurts because in some cases it can help you build better prototypes. Um, for example, if you use uh, Protopy, which is a tool to build interactive prototypes, there it's useful if you have some knowledge or if you build websites and Webflow, that is also very useful to know code, but I wouldn't say that it is essential to do your daily job as a UX designer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One person's got straight to the point and says, what are the average salary expectations for alumni in their first naught to three years in the industry? Um, this, um, this person is based in the UK, um, but is also happy to hear about other countries. Um, I suppose we don't have to say, but um, I'll, I'll pass this one over to Pia. <laughs> this many pounds no um i i don't know for uk i don't know but one uh one good trick is to look at glass doors uh so this is a, a website where uh you can find information on the on the company you're applying to a lot of times they will also have um some prices on it like what can you sort of expect my impression is that it's a little bit lower than it's than in truth so if you bump it up a tiny bit then it should still be um okay and they might it might give you leverage to to get it lowered a little bit because usually it gets lowered a tiny bit um there is also another another site but i would have to actually look but if you if you google or if you search for UX salaries, maybe mm -hmm. worldwide or something like that. It actually gives you um, a chart uh, with different salaries around the world by the country. And it, for me, it was quite useful. I think now this has changed from, um, and this is changing and it really depends on the company. So I would I would suggest these two sources to, to go for. Mm -hmm. I think it's also worthwhile saying that it's also to be realistic. I think once you've done the Career Foundry 10-month um, UX design program, um, you will be able to apply for junior, also middle positions based on yeah. <coughs> experience that you've had before. Mm -hmm. You might not be able to apply for um, the senior or uber senior positions, um, but by all means try. But um, mm -hmm. the, the program will equip you more than adequately for the junior and the middle roles. Yeah. Um, and that's the ones that you're going to be targeting after you've completed the program. And uh, may I add something to this one, actually? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So this is also a really good conversation to have with your mentor and probably tutor, um, because they are the ones that know you best. Um, and just, I, I know for a lot of the students, we would have a conversation. And I would say, I would even have some um, that I would actually suggest going for the senior position, but because of the previous experience. And for me, it didn't make sense. We'll go for the junior. No, you you have been in such a related field that you can just take what you've learned and you can bring it to the senior level. Um, it, there is a lot of the students that can go for, um, for the mid-level, but still there is the majority would go for junior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for peace of mind, we also do offer a job guarantee, which you can read about online uh, with all of our career change programs. Um, so that's just for peace of mind. Um, and uh, we'll post a link to that um, later. Um, another question that's come through is um, somebody that literally has no experience and is looking to do the program or is thinking about UX design. Um, mm -hmm. Can they do it? Would you? Can you take this course from complete scratch Definitely. Maureen? I would also say so. Mm -hmm. I think the most important thing is motivation um, and what your background is. If you are really motivated, motivated, then definitely. Mm -hmm. I had a, I still remember one of the students, there are so many stories that I can bring, but one was, was particular because she's, she really stuck in my head and she was, we had conversations about almost what does UI mean? Like, what is, you know, how do you name things? What are these these things named? And then at the end of her specializations, she was um, 
she was one of the students that I was most proud of, of both UX and UI wise because her projects were just so good. She was so dedicated and, and she just learned tons. Mm -hmm. Another question that's come through is, do you need a university degree? Um, you do not need a university degree to do this uh, boot camp at Career Foundry, um, but having a university degree is also not going to hinder you because obviously that's three or four years experience that you've had doing something else. Um, and the soft skills that you would have learned through any um, degree course will definitely benefit you um, at every stage of the program and also in your search afterwards. Um, Pierre, any advice on those looking to do freelancing? Is UX conducive to um, a freelance kind of lifestyle? Um, that's a good question. And that's actually a question that I ask myself a lot. I've done some, but I have to be honest, personally, I've done it mostly with connection with UI. So that, and maybe this is my experience. So don't take it, you know, sort of, is the true industry experience. So I've mostly worked in-house. Um, I think that there are freelancers that do UX, but mostly through agencies. So they would be sent through an agency into different companies, and then they would be the true UX designers. But if you would want to have your own company as a UX designer, then I think having a UI, a, a UI with it would be helpful, actually. But this is just my opinion, so. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just scrolling through. What would be uh, a possible path to gain experience as a UX designer after the program? Um, because mm -hmm. the person who wrote um, is um, says that all the positions I've been seeing invariably ask for some sort of experience. Mm -hmm. uh, Maureen? I think there are many ways. You can start with help with volunteering. Like if you have a local charity that has a very crappy website, you can help you can help them with that. Or family, friends that have businesses, I would say that that is also a very nice way to support businesses in these times when people are realizing that they need to be have a, like a digital presence because the physical world is kind of closed off right now. So I think this is a perfect chance to go through that, to that little store that is struggling with something or help someone set up a web shop. And this is how you can also collect experiences. You can do internships. Um, I would say try thinking of like personal pro projects where you could solve a certain problem. Because when I um, applied with my job for my job, I also used a portfolio that only consisted of the fictional projects that I used at Career Foundry. So I think if you can show what your thought process is, that is more important than having projects that are successful in real life, I would say. Um, so these are, yeah, yeah. Supporting local businesses, doing um, um, design challenges or some kind of like personal projects and internships. These are ways for you to gain experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one question for Pia. Um, we have one uh, person here who is a UX leader at a bank in South Africa. Uh, mm -hmm. How would you, um, they're in the position of mentoring, but they mm -hmm. don't you're qualified so how do you get over the fear of leadership or mentoring um how do you find mentoring or think of that fear of mentoring mm. um i think a lot of the mentoring it's a little bit different from career foundry but a lot of the mentoring just in the field happens very organically it happens when you're working um with your colleagues then you would mentor them and these are some of the best mentorship i had personally is when uh when these um developed organically and then from there on i think you also gain um gain experience you see that you have um outcomes that you're bringing value to people and then trying the more you do it um the better you you get at it uh, and you learn as well mm -hmm. um and a final question here what is the future of ux or ui design where is it all going Maureen. 
I hope it goes in the direction where all our senses are embedded in the experience. So now it's mostly visual and audible, but I can imagine or I hope that at some point we will build experiences that also consist of touch, of smell, of having an experience that fits all your senses so that is also more accessible to people that are for example deaf or bl blind and i can see that in something like ar vr i think that's gonna be important but i hope in a like more abstract level that ux design the future of that is that we will design more holistic experiences so not just on the um scale of is this user friendly in the sense of is it um does it pass a usability test but way bigger as in how can we guide people with a good experience um from the second they think about a product to the point that they buy another product so through the whole journey that is my wish for the future of ux design <laughs> my, my hope i think that was a good point to finish um the live panel i think that was a very positive way to end this evening um thank you for both to take the time as i said for those um who were tuned in at the beginning um maureen does have a great instagram uh, account which you should check out it's ux collection where there is lots of different UX design material, um, super interesting. Um, and Pia also has a fantastic blog called UXD Girl, which also is a collaborative blog with lots of um, interesting articles there. So definitely go and check that out, super good. Um, and for anybody who is interested in UX design and wants to take a step further, um, after this webinar has finished, there will be a uh, booking page where you can uh, book a call with one of our career advisors here at Career Foundry, if you want to talk um, more about the program, what we offer, um, and all kinds of things, uh, all questions that might not have been answered here this evening. So um, from me, goodbye. And uh, thank you, uh, Maureen and Pia, and uh, have a good evening. Or thank you very wherever much. You are. Thanks, right. everyone. Thank you, Will. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Bye. Bye. We are ending in eight seconds. <laughs> okay.